Rams return home tonight. Seven game win streak on the line against George Washington coming in. They're one and two in the league. Tell me a little bit about what we can expect from them tonight. Well, they're they're big. They're a lot bigger um, than us. You know, they're six nine, six nine, six ten across the you know three, four, and five positions. They do a great job from the three point line. They're one of the better three point shooting teams uh, we've played. They've got multiple guys that shoot it well uh, from three, and then they're very very good on the offensive glass. Ultimately, when we lost to them last year in the home game. The offensive glass did us in. They just annihilate us on the offensive glass, particularly in the second half and down the stretch when we had a chance to get some stops and maybe pull away a little bit. The, uh, they, they hurt us on the offensive glass. So they're very similar to how they were last year. Um, they run a lot of the same things offensively. Defensively, they even mix in more defenses. Last year, they pretty much played 1-3-1 one, one and man. Now they play some 1-3-1, one, one, some 2-3, two, some 3-2, some man. So they, they mix their defenses. I'm sure we'll get a, a steady diet of all those all those mixed defenses tonight. We need to be prepared for that. Let's break that down a little bit. So they get, they have three guys that they start, 6-9 or above, and they out-rebound their opponents by over seven a game. How do we combat that um, coming out tonight? Is it a matchup thing? Where do the bigs get a few more minutes? I know that sometimes it's been hard to get them the minutes this year with the matchups we've had. Yeah, we'll play bigger lineups. We're going to start Justin Tillman and, and uh, Mo, and then start Burge at the three. That's about as big as we can, about big as we can get. So. We're gonna we're gonna start off uh, that way, and then you know we've got a quickness advantage. We we are the best rebounding team in the league, just in league games. I think we're plus ten or so. So, you know, it'll be a battle of wills. Who can impose their will? Who can be the who can be the the, the, the you know the best rebounding team? You got one and two in the league, and so we do impose our will. And we certainly have advantages with quickness. Even though you're big, that doesn't mean you're quick. And there's some advantages that we can take take uh, advantage of. And we need to you know the game needs to be played more at a full court and our at our type pace. If it gets into you run your set, we run our set. You run, you know, that sort of game that certainly favors them. So now let's talk a little bit about the zones that they're going to run. We've prior to the break, you had struggled a little bit against zone. It looks like we've cleaned that up a little bit. Talk about the, what you've been able to do with that extra time over the break to be more effective against the zone offense, zone defenses. Yeah, we've really spent a lot of time on our zone offense, just working on concepts more than plays. We we've, we pretty much are running the same plays we've run, but we've worked on concepts, different screening actions, different angles, different seals, uh, different passes, uh, different things we can do against the zone. So we've really tried to just work on those concepts, get our guys a little bit better in those concept areas as opposed to worrying so much about executing certain plays and becoming robotic against zones. And I think it's helped our guys. Defensively, when you have a guy like Tyler Cavanaugh comes in that could be a potential A-10 player of the year candidate, um, do you have to shift any schemes or anything like that to try to be more successful against him? Certainly you have to have an awareness of him. You know, we have to have a real awareness of him late in the clock and out of timeouts. They really want to go to him and get him get him looks. So we uh, you know we're gonna know where he is and we're gonna do our best to, to, to guard him and stop him and you know we did a decent job on him last year but Corey Bilberry was the one who guarded him a lot of the time. K B did a really, really Nice job on it defensively uh, last year, and so we've got to we've got to find some other guys maybe that can that can guard him and, and help us out. So the Doug Brooks experience has been a very popular topic this week um, around town. Can you talk to me a little bit about prior to the year? You talked to me about how you had def worked, spent the summer defining his role in Spain and and what you wanted him to do. It seems like he's embraced that. Can you talk a little bit about what you'd like to see from him and how he's embraced it to be successful so far? Yeah, I'd like him to just keep playing like he's playing. You know, he, you know, he's always going to be a little bit wild, but you understand that, and you got to see the good in that, and choose to see the good in that, and understand that's who he is. And you know, Doug giveth and go, Doug taketh away sometimes too, but but he gives a lot more than he takes, and and uh, he's playing really, really well. He's playing within himself. He's taking good shots, and he's uh, being a lot more disciplined on the uh, on the defensive end. But his energy, you know, he gives us a, a big time jolt when he gets in the game and comes off the bench and, and you love that uh, you love that jolt that he gives you so we're uh, um, pleased with his progress and hopeful that he can uh, keep playing at a high level through the rest of the conference season great well good luck tonight coach thank you